Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You're welcome to our Word of Truth Life. And today we begin our service from the book of Ezekiel. Amen. This is the 20th edition of the Word of Truth. And in the book of Ezekiel, the Bible tells us in verse 1, The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of dry bones. Hallelujah. And in verse 4, the Bible says, And he said unto me, Prophesy unto these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Amen. As we begin this service, I prophesy unto you, you will hear the word of the Lord today in the name of Jesus. And every dry place in your life will come to life in the name of Jesus. Light is coming, and as light is coming, there will be transformation in your life in the name of Jesus. Let's begin to honor the name of the Lord, give him praise, give him glory, for he's worthy of our praise and our glory. God is good, God is kind, amen. He's kept us, he's preserved served us. He's our God and he's our maker. Exalt the name of Jesus. He's worthy of all praise and adoration. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for the privilege to be alive in the land of the living. All glory, all adoration be unto you in the mighty name of Jesus. And as we begin this service, Lord, I pray for as many as are hearing us today, as many as are under the sound of this word, Father, touch the life of your children transform a destiny today let a dry bone receive the word of the lord father let households be made whole let divorce cases lord because receive settlement in the name of jesus i pray over that child that is a trouble to his family lord restoration restoration in the name of jesus i speak to that one that is confused lord let the word of wisdom come upon you in the name of jesus receive the light of God for a change of destiny, for a change of story in the mighty name of Jesus. For the word of God is there is yea and amen. Amen. And as the word is coming, Lord, Father, we ask that you put your word in the mouth of your servant. May he declare your truth. May he declare the light of God upon you in the name of Jesus. That as men will hear him, Lord, they will hear you. As men will see him, Lord, they will see you. And we say so shall it be in jesus mighty name we pray and we give god all the glory and the privilege and so we welcome our pastor a man who is a man of the word amen a man who spends hours and hours at the feet of god hearing the word of god and hearing from god to feed us with that word and so please with god's understanding in our hearts let's welcome pastor dr maxel express okaru for the word of truth for today hallelujah praise the lord let's give jesus a round of applause righteous father we say thank you holy father we say thank you we bless the beauty of your holiness we thank you for this 20th edition of word of true life you'll be glad that you're in this service because god is said to bless you afresh in the name of the Lord jesus he sent his word to jacob and enlightened the holy Spirit. father lord king of glory the word of god is coming mightily it will come like lightning it will hit you in the name of the Lord jesus Father, Lord, King of glory, send your word, O Lord, that will make a difference in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, that person that desire touch, let that person be touched tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, let that person have encounter tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, Lord, King of glory, we thank you, O Lord, our Heavenly Father. We thank you for your word. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. The word of God made it clear in Psalm 119, verse 105. He said, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And Psalm 119, verse 130 said, The entrance of thy word giveth light and giveth understanding unto the simple. We are the simple ones, and everyone watching, if you are simple, you are meek, you are apt to learn it. The word of God is coming to give you understanding in my name, Jesus. The word of God is meeting you at that point of need, and there will be a turnaround in your life in my name. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. 
Now today, um, our topic for today is caption, how to be enlightened by God. Simply how to be enlightened by God. This month has been declared as a month of enlightenment and our God has been taking us from one level of enlightenment to the other. And tonight we shall be learning how to be enlightened by God. The word of God is mighty. We understand from scripture that the word of God is the light of God. And also we know also the word of God let us know in Proverbs. In Proverbs 20 verse 27 it let us know that the word of God is said. Let somebody read Proverbs 20 27 for us. Let's enjoy it. Proverbs 20 27. We are told in Proverbs 20, 27, it said, The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward part of the belly of man. Wonderful. And also another person should read for us Psalm 18, verse 28. Let's see. Psalm 18, 28. Quickly, let's digest that. The word of God says, For I will light my candle, the Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. Wonderful. We can see. He said, I will light my candle and the word of God will enlighten my darkness. The word of God is an light now. It's the one that enlightened people with my eternal Lord Jesus. We are told in Psalm 1, uh, uh, if we go to uh, Job, in Job 33 verse 28 and uh, 30, he made it up on our Let somebody read that for us. He said, to deliver his soul. From going down the pit to be enlightened with the light of the living. Are you there? He will deliver his soul from going to the pit, and the light shall see, his life shall see the light. 29 30, go ahead. He said, Lo, all these things work at God oftentimes in man. To bring back his soul from the pit. Be enlightened with the light of the. If you look at where we just read now, Job 33 from 28, 29, 30, is explaining the whole process. He said, Look, to deliver man from going into the pit, to be enlightened, uh, to be enlightened with the light of the living. He said, Lo, all this God do often with man. He said to withdraw his soul from going down the pit to be enlightened with the light of the living. That is what God do. When mankind is going towards uh, domination, he's going towards destruction, he's going towards the pit, God will withdraw his soul by giving him the light of the mighty name of Jesus. So tonight we want to see the light of God, how God enlightens people. That is what we want to know. We want to learn tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus said in John 8 verse 12, he made it clear to us, he said, look, in John, let somebody read John for us. Uh, John 4 verse, John 8, 12. I think John 8, 12 precisely. Then speak Jesus again to them, saying, I'm the light of the world. He, listen, he said, he that followed me shall not walk in darkness. For shall have the light of life. Thank you very much. You see what Jesus Christ is saying. In John 8 verse 12, he made it abundantly clear. He said, look, that I am the light of the world. Each, anyone that followeth me shall not walk in what? In darkness. But that person shall have the light of life. You see it? So, tonight we want to look at how are we enlightened by God? How do God enlighten mankind. So that's what we want to look. We are going to look at it from one aspect to the other. Now, first of all, the first process of enlightenment is start with new birth. Say new birth. New birth is the beginning of all enlightenment because we've been told by default, mankind is defective. You understand? Every man that is born into the world. And that's why my philosophy is that I, I said mankind is a wartime machine with the power of volition moving towards life or destruction, moving towards light or darkness. That is the story of mankind. Mankind is a wartime machine with the power of volition. What am I saying? 
Mankind is created by the word of God and it is his program by time. And his program by time. And this man have the power of volition, the power of decision to choose what to do. Whether to go left or to go right or to go straight. Man have that. And whatever decision man chooses, if man makes right decision, he moves forward. If he makes wrong decision, he moves backward. So you see it. So it depends on the decision. If he makes a wrong decision, he moves towards darkness. If he makes a right decision, he moves towards light. And also, if he makes wrong decision, he moves towards uh, 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 destruction. If he makes right decision, he moves towards life. And this was what Moses was telling the people of Israel. He gathered them together. If we look at the Bible, in Deuteronomy 30, verse 19 and 20. He said to them, He said, I call heaven this year to be a record between me and you. That God has said before you what? Life and death. Blessing and cursing. He said, but I advise you, choose life that you and your descendant may live and enjoy. And in verse 20, he said, look, obey the voice of God. Obey the commandment of God. He said, because he is the life. The length of your day is in me. How long you will live on earth is dependent on Christ. He said, cleave to him. Be bonded with him. Be covenanted with him. You see it? So, our life is dependent on God. Dependent on Jesus Christ. That is our life. It is Jesus. So, the first thing that mankind must do, because man, by default, is defective. When we say defective, that means man, by, uh, by default, is carrying a dark candlelight. Man, by default, is carrying a defective spirit. He's carrying, the spirit is not, the spirit is not the Holy Spirit. He's not carrying, he's just carrying a defective spirit. A spirit that has the Adamic sin nature. Every man that comes into this world carry that spirit. And that's the, the scripture will let us know. If we look at the Bible very well. In Ephesians 5, we are told, Ephesians 5 verse 8. He said, well, we are sometimes what? Darkness. Now are ye light. You understand? He said, now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Everyone that come into this world is in darkness. So except Jesus Christ lights that person. And this is what we, are, we, we can see in John 1 verse 4 and 9. He said, look, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. And in verse 9, he says, it's the true light that lighted all mankind. Jesus is the true light that lighted up. So one must be lighted up. Without you having your light being lighted up, your candle being lighted up, then you cannot talk of enlightenment. Enlightenment begins from the candle light of God, of, of God lighting you. And that light, when you have that light, it means you have the quickening spirit. That is what it means. And all of that. Now we just quickly look at that place. We said new beds. What are the stages? Let's look at the process. What happened at new birth? In new birth, the first thing that happens in new birth, the first thing that happens to you is that you have a new spirit. Your old spirit is formatted. A new spirit comes inside you. That is the first thing that happened to mankind. And what does that mean? For that you to have that new spirit, that new spirit is called the quickening spirit. Is that the quickening spirit? That is what comes inside you. Now have the quickening spirit. And this we can see in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 45. The new spirit. Your Adamic sin nature has been formatted. You now have a new spirit, which is the quickening spirit. That is the first thing that happens to you at new birth. Then now, after that has happened, you have that spirit inside you. Now, you have to still do other things. What are you supposed to do? You understand? You have to do what we call, after you have that spirit inside you, you now have to fulfill all righteousness. The fulfillment of all righteousness is necessary. And what is that? This is the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the baptism of water, and the baptism of fire for you to fulfill all righteousness. Jesus Christ said, look, he, uh, when John the Baptist said, you are the one to baptize me, not me baptize He said, no, let's do it for now to fulfill all righteousness. So as Christians, we must fulfill all righteousness. We need to be spiritually baptized, and we, we must baptize by water and all of that. Because we are told in Mark 6, 6, 6, 6, is there anyone that is baptized? Are you getting it? He said, when you repent and you are baptized, that one will be saved. That is the one that is saved in the mind, in the mind of Jesus. So we must do spiritual baptism. And even what baptism? We must be purified. We must be uh, cleansed with the word of God. The word of God is a cleanser. It will clean us in the mind, in the mind of Jesus. So these are the phrases. The first one, like I said, is for you to have the new spirit. The second one is for you to be uh, to fulfill all righteousness. Now, after you fulfill all righteousness, what else? Now, 
the new your, your spirit man that you have, the new spirit and all of that, you now begin to feed that spirit. That spirit needs to be fed. You need to begin to feed the spirit with the word of God in the mind, in the mind of Jesus. The next process after new births, these whole three things you've done, the next process after you've got given your life to Christ is for you now to begin to have encounter with the word of God. Say encounter with the word of God. You must have a counter with the word of God. Because the word of God is an enlightener. The word of God is what enlightens. We have seen from scripture, you must have a counter with the word of God. And the word of God must come. The more the word, the more the light. The word itself is the light of God, as we have seen from scripture. Psalm 119 verse 105, it said, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a lamp unto my uh, path. And in Psalm 119 verse 130, it said, The entrance of thy word giveth light and giveth understanding unto the simple. So what does that mean? We are going to look at it. What is the process of this encountering with the word of God? We are going to look at it one after the other. That is number two one. Number two one, the first thing you must see, you must increase your word. You must increase your word level in my term of Jesus. And the more we say, if you have advanced word, you have what? Advanced light. Tell you about advanced word equals advanced light. The more the word, the more the light. You say it. You have to go for the word. And we are told in Joshua 1 8, he said, This book of law must not depart from your mouth. Thou shalt meditate on it day and night, and also to do all that is written in it. He says, So as your way will be made prosperous, and thou shalt have what? Good success. So you must study the word. Second Timothy 2 15. He said, Look, that you should study to show yourself approved unto the word, a good workman that is not ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Our vocation as new Christians, Christians of God, is for we to be word practitioners. Ephesians 4, verse 1. He said, Be worthy of the vocation which ye are called. We are supposed to be word practitioners in the mind in the name of Jesus. So, like I said, your increased word we give increase. Uh, light. Then the next step after increased word is for you to increase your knowledge. You must have increased knowledge in the mind in the name of Jesus. And increased knowledge also will give you increased light in the mind in the name of Jesus. Then the next one, you must have increased wisdom. Increased wisdom also gives you increased light. Each one always increase your light in the mind in the name of Jesus. Then increase understanding also. The more the light, the more the understanding, the more the light. We are told in Psalm 119 verse 1 uh, 30. He said, the entrance of thy word giveth light and giveth understanding unto the people. So the more the understanding, the more the light in the mind, in the mind of Jesus. And I pray for you tonight that God will give you understanding as he gives you his light in the mind, in the mind of Jesus. No little word that the word of God made declare in Jeremiah 3, verse 15. God said, I will give you pastors according to my heart that will feed you with what? Knowledge and understanding. So we need knowledge and understanding. Proverbs 1, verse 7. He said, the fear of God is what? The beginning of knowledge. Psalm 111, verse 10. He said, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. We require knowledge. We require wisdom. We require understanding. All of these are needed. And also, we go for increased revelation. Increased revelation also give increased light. The more the revelation, the more the light. We are told uh, in Ephesians 1, verse 17, uh, that I cease not to give thanks, but I pray that you have the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of revelation knowledge, so that your eyes of understanding will be enlightened. The enlightenment is the spiritual insight that you are getting. God will give you spiritual insight in the mind, in the mind of Jesus. So these are the processes that you will take for you to have deep encounter with the word in the mind, in the mind of Jesus. Then we go to number three. Number three process. This is what reveal. Tell your neighbor what reveal. Now, what really comes as a result of the Spirit of God that is in you? Oh, because every man has a spirit, the Spirit of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost has the mandate to be your teacher. He's a great enlightener. He's to teach you. And we are going to see how he will teach you in the mind, in the mind of Jesus. And the processes we are going to learn now, the process of the Holy Ghost teaching you, first, the Holy Spirit has the ministry to enlighten you. He has the ministry to teach you. He's your great teacher in the mind, in the name of Jesus. He will teach you all things, as the word of God said in John 14, verse 26. He said, we teach you all that I have said unto you. He will teach you the past, the present, and the future. The Holy Spirit has that mandate to teach us in the mind, in the name of Jesus. And that is why he's the greatest enlightener. He's the one that teaches us in Jesus' mighty name. Then number two, as far as I've been teacher, now also, you have to be a lover. Every lover, secret are revealed to lover. If you are a lover, <laughs> if you are a lover of the Holy Ghost, you are a lover of the world, then 
The Holy Spirit will now begin to reveal secret to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. We are told in Deuteronomy 29, 29. He said, every secret belongs to who? To the Lord. And he reveal it to whomsoever he wants to reveal it. He said, and when he do, it's for that person and his generation to run with it. So he said, secret are revealed to lovers. We are told in 1 Corinthians 2, verse 9 and 10. He said, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Neither has it entered the heart of men. The things God has prepared. He said, but he has revealed it. To us, his lovers. I pray for you tonight that God will reveal secret to you in the mind in the name of Jesus. Via his spirit, he will impart you. He will give you all our spiritual virtue in the mind in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' precious name we have prayer. Now, you see it. So these are the processes. You become a lover. And as I've been coming a lover and all of that, what it does, this, the spirit also, is, is it helps you to be an intercessor. It helps you to pray. You understand? With a groaning voice. You understand? He prays for us. The Holy Spirit is able to search the mind of God and reveal it to you in the mind of the Lord Jesus. So these are the workings of the Holy Spirit. And this, all of this come via what reveal in the mind of the Lord Jesus. And also true revelation. You will have deep revelation in the mind of the Lord Jesus. God will give you deep revelation. Now number four. The next one is uh, it's true glorification. Glorification and impartation. True glorification and impartation in the mind of the Lord Jesus. Is that number three or number four? Number three now. Okay, number three is true glorification. I think it's just glorification. Number three is just glorification. Impact is another one. So we take glorification. Now glorification is another means of enlightenment. The more you glory God, the more God enlightens you in the mind of the Lord Jesus. Our God usually enlightens us as we glory. As we begin Psalm 100, let us know. He said, enter his gate with thanksgiving. Enter his, this with praise. His inner court with praise. And the holies of holy with worship. As you begin to thank God, praise him and worship him. Then he will reveal secret to you in the mind of the Lord Jesus. He will tell you what to do. As you praise him, as you worship him, he will tell you what to do in the mind of the Lord Jesus. He will give you deep secret, deep revelation as you glorify him. So glorification help us. To be able to reveal secret in the mind of the Lord Jesus. Then the next one after glorification, that one is anointing and impartation. That is number four in the mind of the Lord Jesus. Anointing and impartation. What would that do? Now, when we talk about anointing and impartation, this is very good because you see, men of God, they can lay hands on you, they can anoint you with oil, and you will you, you have you'll be enlightened in the mind of the Lord Jesus. The word of God says in 2 Timothy 1, verse 6. Apostle Paul was talking to Timothy. He said, Look. He says, stay up the gift that is in you in the laying hands of you. Apostle Paul laid his hands on Timothy. And he said, the gift that was uh, impacted in Timothy, that Timothy should stir it up. Are you getting it? He knows that Timothy have the gift of the word of faith inside him. He says, to stir it up in the mind of the Lord Jesus. So, it brings enlightenment in the mind of the Lord Jesus. Anointing breaks the yoke. We are told in Psalm 105 verse 14. He says, suffer no man to do any harm. He said, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. So, you see it. So anointing, all of this help to give you divine enlightenment in the mind of the Lord Jesus. Every king and priest in Israel, the first thing they do is to anoint them. And when they anoint them, you see the Spirit of God take over them and they are enlightened more in the mind of the Lord Jesus. Because the Spirit of God brings more light. It brings more light to that person in Jesus' precious name. So these are the things that the Spirit of God does. Laying out of hand, anointing you, and all of this will make you, you become very fast, you become more knowledgeable in the mind of the Lord Jesus. And the last one we shall be considering tonight, and that one is very, very significant. The last one we'll be looking for tonight is God sent teachers. There are great teachers which is sent to come and teach you. People, mentors, people that will mentor you in the mind of the Lord Jesus in, in form of prophets, apostles, evangelists, and all of that. They are to teach you. They are to impact you. They are also give you spiritual virtues and all of that. They are your teachers. Just as the Holy Spirit is teaching, he sent men to teach you. And we call them light bearers. So the number five is light bearers. You see, light bearer carries light and they will light you in the mind of the Lord Jesus. The word of God made it clear. In, we are told in Matthew, in Matthew 5, 14 to 16, let us read that for us. That you are a light, you must go and light other people. Being a light bearer, you are going to light people up in the mind of the Lord Jesus. He said, let your light so shine. And people will give glory to God for your good works in the mind of the Lord Jesus. So the work we do, they are the light of God in the mind of the Lord Jesus. No one can do great work without being lighted up. As you are lighted up, then you are able to do good works in the mind of the Lord Jesus. Are you there, Matthew 5, 14 to 16? Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. 
Neither do men build a candle. Neither do men light a candle. And put it under a bushel. But on a candlestick. And they give a light unto all. That are in the house. Let your light so shine before men. That they may see your good works. And glorify your father which is heaven. Thank you very much. That is uh, the work of God. You see it. Now when you light people up. By going to show your good work to people. You are lighting people up and all of that. They will begin to give glory to God. In the mighty name of Jesus. And this we can see in Acts 10 38. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about doing what? Doing good. Healing all those that were oppressed by the devil. He said and God was with him. So that is how it is you see. God is going to make you a light bearer. You begin to light your wall. Just as the word of God says in Isaiah 2. Isaiah 2 verse 2. Let's read that quickly. Isaiah 2 verse 2. Let us say. He said, look, we are a city on top of the mountain. Nations shall be drawn to our light. They shall come to our light. This one we said to this one. Let's go to the mountain top and go and serve God there. Because they will see the light of God upon you. In my age, in the month Jesus. Isaiah 60 verse 1 and 2. He said, arise and shine for your light is come. He said, darkness will cover the earth and gross darkness the poor. He said, but for you, arise and shine. Are you there? Isaiah 2 verse 2. Read that quickly for us. He said, it shall come to pass in the last day. The mountain of the Lord's house shall be established and that is you. In the top of the mountain, you shall be on top of the mountain. And you shall be exalted above the hills. And all nations shall flow into it. They shall come to your light. In my name, in the name of Jesus. I pray for you tonight as you receive this word. God will enlighten you. All nations shall be drawn to you because of your light. In the name, in the name of Jesus. You will be a light bearer because God has enlightened you. God has shown you his light. Father, Lord, King of glory, I thank you for the lives of everyone here. Those that have listened, O oh Lord, bless them abundantly. In the name, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for this word of truth, O oh Lord. Father, Lord, King of glory, we thank you, Jehovah Shaddai. In Jesus' precious name, we have pray. Amen. Now, we do not close our service without giving opportunity. If you know you are here or you are online, you've given your life to you, you are ready to give your life to Christ. Or you gave your life to Christ before you backslid that you went about doing what you are not supposed to do. You want to be reconnected back with Jesus. What a day for you. All you need to put your right hand on your chest and see after me. Lord Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. I believe in your name. I believe you are the Son of God. That you came into this world to die for me. And the third day you rose again from the dead. Thank you, for, uh, thank you for saving me. I have no business with Satan. I reject him completely. In Jesus' precious name, I have prayed. Amen. Let's give Jesus a round of applause. If you know you've done that online, look for a Bible-believing church and begin to attend. And God will prosper you. God will increase you in his light. In the mind, in the mind of Jesus. He will enlighten you. Thank you, King of Glory. In Jesus' precious name, we have, we have prayed. Now, if you want to sow into our ministry, this is an opportunity. Whatever gift you want to give, I want to pray for you for that. For whatever love gift you want to give, be it offering, be it tithe, be it sexual offering, I pray for you. That seed that you're sowing it now, God will bless you in the mind, in the name of Jesus. You will see, see our account information school. Father, Lord, King of Glory. Bless them upon them. That seed they are sowing now, a wonderful blessing for them in the mind, in the name of Jesus. Do for them what no man can do for them, O Lord. The blessing of God that make it that and the sorrow, let it rest upon them. In Jesus' precious life, the 20th edition. Uh, my name is Pastor Dr. Max L. Espresso Caro, and I'm here with Prophetess Mrs. A.M. Espresso Caro. Welcome. Thank you, Pastor. Okay, this is the 20th edition of our Word of Truth Life, as we've been told. And this is our question and answer section where we take questions concerning the Christian life, the word, and how best to make our lives better in Christ in the name of Jesus. We'll take the questions for today. I'll be asking the questions and Pastor will provide us um, Holy Spirit-led answers in the name of Jesus. And it says, the first one says, how do I get favor with God and with men? Amen. Uh, well, I guess this has to do, you know, we in Africa, we always believe in connection. So this person is asking, how does he get divine connection with God and with men? So, Pastor, how do we get favor? Okay, favor, divine favor, how does it come? Um, quickly, if you go to the scripture, we are told in Luke 2, verse 52, that Jesus Christ grew in wisdom and in strength and had favor with God and favor with men. Is it? Now, the, the, the key thing there is he grew in wisdom, grew in strength, and had favor 
God have favor with men. For you to have favor, you have to be somebody that is wise. Understand? And how will you be wise? How do you get wisdom? We are told in James 1, verse uh, 5 and 6, he said, look, is there anyone that lacks wisdom? Let that one ask. And God, I give liberality to everyone, we give to that one. So if you are there, you, you, are, you need divine favor, then you must apply wisdom. Because wisdom attracts the favor of God. So we are talking of the wisdom of God, not the wisdom of men, not the wisdom, satanic wisdom. We are talking of wisdom from above, the pure wisdom. So it usually attracts divine favor. And the favor of God will come upon you as you go. And you will grow in strength. You will not be feeble, you will be strong, you will be mighty in Jesus' mighty name. Um, favor is a topic that I, I, I like so much because a lot of people think that uh, favor is just something that comes on one, like a, just something that you just sit down and then favor will come upon you. But just judging from the, uh, what Pastor told us from, um, from the book of Luke, Jesus Christ's life was not just like that. We noticed that even from a young age of 12, he was out in the temple going and learning so there's a process to get in favor that's the wisdom pastor is telling us about if you see also in the book of first samuel chapter 2 verse 26 the bible tells us that samuel grew the child samuel grew in favor with god and with men amen and we recall the life of samuel samuel was one of the bibles recorded at the end of his lifetime he said if anyone can come and accuse him of doing anything against them they can come and they should come out and no man could stand because he was a just man amen yes. so for you to walk in favor the wisdom on how to uh, do the things of god God will grant unto you and also to walk with men because favor is the, the Lord's favor upon man comes through men. Okay, we'll take the next question. And what we have here says, What power do I have as a believer in Jesus Christ or as a Christian? Okay. As a believer, as a Christian. Um every Christian is a believer. But not all believers are Christians. <laughs> so depending on how it is, because we understand that even Satan believes too, uh, but he's not a Christian. So now, what power? Um, Christian, the power that Christians have is the power that God has uh, given to us, everyone, through Christ. Uh, he has given us in Matthew, Jesus said in Matthew 28, verse 18, up to 20, all power has been given unto me in heaven and on earth and on earth. He said, now go in, into all the world, preach the gospel, good news, baptizing them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. And Lord, I'll be with you. And yeah, so that power, he has commissioned us. And that is what we call the delegated power. He has delegated power unto us to go and preach the gospel. That power is with us. And also if we go to a mark, we are told in Mark 16. Uh, we also read, read Mark 16 for us. Mark 16 from 11, from 15, 16 and 17. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world. He said, Go ye into all the world. And preach the gospel to every creature. And preach the gospel to all creatures. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Now you need to take it out. Say, He that believeth and is baptized will be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. He that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Now this is the power. He said, These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. You see, as a Christian, as a saint of God, as a true believer, now you will be able to cast out devils, demons. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall speak with new tongues. You'll be able to speak in tongues. They shall take up serpents. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. It shall not hurt them. Like poison all those things. As a true Christian, it will not poison, it will not hurt you in the mind. It's in the name of Jesus. They shall lay hands on the sick. They shall lay hands on the sick. And they shall recover. They shall recover. You see it. So now all of these signs and wonders we are able to manifest. And that is why the word of God made it clear. In Romans 8, verse 19, he said the expectation of the creature waited 
for the manifestation of the sons and daughters of God. They are waiting for us to manifest signs and wonders. We are to do signs and wonders. Why right? they will be watching? They will come to our. So these are the powers we are to display as Christians. So if you are a Christian, all of these powers you are supposed to manifest them, including the Word of God. You have been commissioned to speak the Word of God, to preach the Word of God, to speak, to preach, and to do good. So all of these you manifest them. Okay. All right, so we've had the powers for as many who have Christ in you. The Spirit of God is in you, the power that you command. Mm -hmm. I also want to add again, you see, there's what we call the seven redemptive package, the resurrection power. So you'll be able to manifest that too. And this we can see in Revelation 5, verse 12. It said, Jesus is worthy to receive power, there are riches, honor, there are to, re to receive riches, honor. You understand? Strength, glory, uh, blessing. All of this, is, there are seven of them. If yes. you look at it in Revelation 5 verse 12, Jesus is worthy to receive all of them. And we are worthy to receive them too. That's Once true. we accept Jesus as our Lord, as we, it is a premium package of salvation. We can take the liberty of it too in the mind of Jesus. Amen. Pastor, I'd like to read a bit of that Revelation 12. The Bible tells us, saying with a loud voice, What is the Lamb that was slain to receive power yes. and riches, riches and, wisdom and wisdom and strength and, strength and, honor, and, honor, and honor and glory and, glory and, blessing, and blessing? There are seven of them. So all of these are the things we are supposed to manifest. Amen. We thank God for that in the name of Jesus. Okay, the next question here says, does the Holy Spirit leave me any time I commit sin as a Christian? <laughs> okay, um, this one, most times you see, I've heard some people, even some Christians, they will tell you that uh, when you commit sin, the Holy Spirit leaves you. When you beg, for, you, forgive, you beg for God to forgive you, the Holy Spirit will come back. But that is not a true situation. That is not correct. And you see, when they said things like this, they will give you scripture like uh, Isaiah 59, verse 1 and 2. You see, when the Lord said, my hand is not too short, that I cannot save. But, they say, but your sin has separated me from you and all of that. So they will use scriptures like that and all that. Now we must see, understand the Holy Spirit. We are told in John, in John 14, verse 16, where we are introduced to the Holy Ghost. Jesus said, I will pray the Father to send another comforter that will be with you and remain with you for how long? Forever. forever. He said he's going to remain with you forever. That is what Jesus Christ said. He said, another comforter that will be with you and remain with you. And in 17, the spirit of truth, which the world cannot see, neither can they know, neither can they understand. He said, but for you, it's in your midst that is going to be inside you. Talking about Jesus. Jesus was going to be inside our heart. The same spirit, the Holy Spirit. And if you go to... John 14, verse 26. He said, the Holy Ghost, which is the comforter, that was that, will teach you all things. Things that are past, that are present, and things that are So now the Holy Spirit does not leave us. He does not forsake. He doesn't He only stay with you. Even when you commit sin, the Holy Spirit is there. If it is not there, why would the word of God be saying in Ephesians 4, verse 30? He said, grieve not the Holy Spirit of God that was sealing you in the day of redemption. Uh, if it's not with you, will you be grieving? So you see it. The cause is you getting it. But you see, when you do things and all of that, it's just there. Patent is not doing anything, just watching you and all of that. And that was why you see when um, uh, David sinned. You go to Psalm 51, you will see when David sinned. Let's read Psalm 51. Psalm 51, we look at 10, 11, and 12. You see David, after he had sinned, he was begging that he should take not the Holy Spirit from him. And all of that. The Holy Spirit was still there after he has committed sin. He was begging that the Holy Spirit says you renew in him a clean heart. It says, Create in me a clean heart. Create in me a clean heart. Oh God. Oh God. And renew a right spirit within me. And renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence. Cast me not away from thy presence. And take not thy Holy Spirit from me. And take not thy Holy Spirit from you. See, if the Holy Spirit has been taken, will it be saying, Take not? The Holy Spirit is still there. He has committed sin. You understand? You know when he sinned uh, with Bathsheba? He killed the husband and uh, what happened with Bathsheba and on him and all of that. He committed murder and all of that. So he was begging. The Holy Spirit was still with him. He was begging that God should not take away the Holy Spirit. All that. 
Uh, but we know it is not as if the Holy Spirit cannot lead. Understand? Because the Bible let us know in First Thessalonians 5, verse 19, he said, quench not the Holy Spirit of God. You understand? He said, quench not the Spirit. So we know that he can lead, but not in everything he will just lead. You understand? And some will say, what time will he lead? Hey, it is God that we know. I don't know the time we leave. If commit, continue, continue to sin. Apostle Paul said, should we continue in sin that grace may abide? The grace is the Holy Spirit. You understand? He said that grace may abide. He said, God forbid. So you should not be sin. But you begin to sin. sin. The time we come, the Holy Spirit will just leave you. You think he's still there. You remember what happened to Samuel? Uh, to Samson. Uh, Samson thought the power is still there. Is the, the power is the power of the Holy Ghost. Not knowing that the Holy Ghost has left. Uh, we pray God help us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God will help us. So. Okay, we'll take our next question for today. It says, how do I provoke divine visitation or encounter with the living God? Wow, how do I provoke divine visitation and encounter? Um, there are many ways you can do that. You see, one of the ways is to seek the face of God. When you seek God all the time, you try to look for Because God said, look, he said, those that love me, I will love them. You know that? Yeah. Uh, so those that love me, I will love them. So if you love God, he will love you too. You know that? Uh, so we can seek the face of Moses. Seek the face of God. And you see, we, we can see Moses in uh, Exodus 33, verse 18 and 9. He, he told God, said, look, I want to see your glory. I want to see your glory. <laughs> and the glory of God is the goodness of God and the mercy and compassion of God. Uh, he said, I want to thank God. Say, ah, you want to see my face? Because seeing God's face is God's glory. You understand? So how do we have an encounter with God? How do we come face to face with God? It's for us to seek him. One way is seeking him. Then we, we spend five time. Time to meditate. You can see the transfiguration. When Jesus Christ went to Mount Olive and all of that, what happened at the at this thing, transfiguration? They were there praying. And suddenly, you understand? Uh, the transfiguration of God there. So when you are praying, the place of prayer, the place of seeking the face of God, you are praying. Then also with giving. If you are a generous person, you know how to give to God. You remember? Um, Solomon at Mount Gibwa, he gave a thousand pot offering, and God has to visit him that night. <laughs> so giving can provoke a divine encounter. There are many ways we can provoke Okay, um, just a little to add to that. Um, God also honors when you have a specific time that you fellowship with him. You create an altar. Covenant. Hour. There's a covenant hour and a, a covenant, a place in your home. You have, may have a specific corner. You have a specific location. And you, you, it's a place where you meet God at a specific time. God honors those kind of things. And you do not fail. It's just like a lot of places we go to church every Sunday. Sunday is a covenant day that we worship God. And so it doesn't matter where you are on Sunday. You know you must go. And God will appear because he knows his children will gather because of him. Exactly. So the same way when you do such, it provokes encounters. Amen. So God said when two or three are gathered in my name, I the, their their midst. Midst. Yes, So whenever sir. you are this, so husband and wife and children, when they gather to pray, God is there. Yes. Husband and wife, when they gather to pray, God is there. But if you pray all the time and all of that, God will come and visit you and spend time with you. Hallelujah. Okay, so let's take uh, the last question for today. It says, if my biological father and mother were, are Christians or were Christians when they gave birth to me, and I am, am I still born a sinner with a dark candlelight? Let me take this question again. This is somebody who saying that my biological father and mother were Christians when they gave birth to me. Am I still a sinner at the time of my birth? Am I born with a dark candlelight when my parents are Christians? Oh, this is a technical question, you understand? Um, what this person is asking, you know, when you are a Christian, you are not a saint of God. When two saints, the wife is a saint, the husband is a saint, and two of them marry and give birth, are they going to give birth to a saint? Or they will still give birth to a sinner? sinner. That is the question the person is asking. You understand? Now, the truth of the matter is that they are going to give birth to a sinner. 
Uh, the reason being that um, the Adamic sin, you understand, must always surface any time that a new child comes into this world. That Adamic sin must follow. Because you see, both of them have light. The father have light, the mother have light, but their light is not the true light of God. Are you getting it? There is the true light. John the Baptist was carrying the light of God. But it was not the true light. So you see, so let's go to the Bible. Let's read what I'm saying. Let's go to John 1. In John 1, we read from 7, 8 up to 9. You see, they talked about John the Baptist. That is not the true light. But we all know that John the Baptist was a light carrier, was a light bearer. But they say it's not the true light. Verse 7 says, The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light. Yes. That all men through him might believe. He was not that light. I'm talking about John the Baptist. Like he was not that light. But was sent to bear witness of that he light. He was sent to bear witness of that light. Hallelujah. Yeah. Okay. Now, continue. Who is the light? Verse 9, nine. says, That was the true light, which lighted every man that cometh into the world. That they are talking about Jesus. Jesus is the true light that lighted every man that cometh into the world. So you see it. So now... When you are born into this world by two uh, Christians and all of that, that does not automatically mean that you are a saint because you are born. You need to still follow the same process because we've been told that everyone that is born into this world carry Adamic sin. And if you look at it critically, you will see uh, Mary was a just, isn't she? Yes. She was a just woman. And we are told Joseph was just too. But you see, God, the Holy Ghost still have to come to Mary because he didn't want. Why didn't he make John and Mary to meet so that they would give birth to Jesus Christ? They cannot give, give birth to that righteous seed. You see, that righteous seed not be there because the seed of sin is in the man. You see, it? so no man have to light, but the true light, the true light. Jesus is only the mediator. He's the only one that can give us that. This, you understand? Oh, I think there are other things in okay. Romans. Uh, let me, let's open to book of Romans uh, chapter 5. Romans chapter 5, five help us to explain and, and it in verse 12. From verse 12, he says so much. Let's see what we have here. It says, yes. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world. As by one man sin entered into the world. And death by sin. And death by sin. And so death passed upon all men. So death passed upon all men. For that all have seen. For all have seen. You don't need to be to sin before you become a sinner. For unto the law sin was in the world. Until the law sin was in the world. Until the law sin was in the world. But sin is not imputed where there is no law. Sin is not imputed where there is no law. Therefore, nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses. See, nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses. Even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression. See, people that they didn't even see, they, they carry death, they, they carry sin. Who is the figure of him that was to come? Yes. But not as the offense. So also, but not as the offense. So also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one, many be dead, much more the grace of God much more the and grace the of God. gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus see, Christ. You need to underline that by one man. It's only Jesus that is the gift that can give you that true light. Had abounded, uh, abounded unto many. Praise yes. the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, then this, this, he has so many. If you just keep reading on to <laughs> that Romans 12, all the way to verse 19, it explains very clearly that by one man sin came into the world, and by one man righteous. Now, the, 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 the truth of the matter is that if uh, two couples, that is husband and wife, they, because they are Christians, when they give birth, they automatically give birth to a saint and all of that, there will be no need for Jesus. Yes. Are you getting it? There will be no need for Jesus. Uh, so Jesus is very significant. And as I said, the just shall live by faith. by faith. Every person must go through. And we are told in John 3, 16, 17, and 18, for God so loved the word that he gave his only begotten son. It's not you the Lord gave. He gave his only begotten son. So he didn't give your father and your mother. He gave his only begotten Jesus that whosoever believeth in him, it is Jesus who believe, not in your father or your mother. Yeah. Whosoever believes you should not perish, but have everlasting life. And eternal life is only given to one person. And this we can see, we read John 17. John 17, verse 2 and 3. Let's see. 
Only the eternal life is given to only one person. He's the one that gives eternal life. As thou has given him power over all flesh. See, as thou has given him power over all flesh. That he shall he should give eternal life to as many as thou has given that him. That he should give eternal life to as many as thou has given him. And this is life eternal. And this is life eternal. That they may know thee. That they may know thee. The only true God. The only true God. And Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ. Whom thou hast. Whom thou hast sent. You see, it's very explicit. Yes, sir. It's God and Jesus Christ. Christ. Not God and you. So. We pray God give us a sign the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So the, the, the true thing is that everyone born into this world has a dark candlelight. And that dark candlelight must be lighted by Jesus Christ. I pray God to give us a sign the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. That last uh, uh, Bible verse gave us very good clarity in the name of Jesus. You know that it is only through Jesus Christ. This is a spiritual thing. Sin is not physical, it's a spiritual thing. And it's what God decides is the way that is what will stand. So it's not determined by man. So God has given us one and is only Jesus Christ. He is the bearer of eternal and that's life. That's why Jesus Christ said in John 14, verse 6, He said, I'm the way, the truth, truth and, the, and life. the life. No one commit to my father except, except through me. me. So yeah, there's no me. other person who is only him. <laughs> He's the one and only. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Pastor, that's where we'll take a, 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 a bow for today. We'll okay. come to the end of our questions. Thank you very much. I want to thank everyone, uh, our viewers, those that watch. God bless you for watching. And uh, everyone that is here, God bless you. And I want to use this opportunity to pray for you. Uh, Father, Lord, King of glory, craft this word in their hearts so that they do not forget it. They put it to remembrance in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We thank you for this word of truth, the 20th edition, O oh Lord. Father, you continue to increase us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let this your word, O oh Lord, penetrate people, O oh Lord, our heavenly Father. Establish your word. Craft them on your word in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, King of glory. You, in Lord. Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. We also want to pray for those that want to support this Word or Two Life program. Those that want to sow or whatever thing you want to give, love gift and all of that. Our account information, our uh, church information is there. And you'll be able to sow. And God will bless you. Be in time, be offering, whatever it is. I pray for you that God will give you a wonderful blessing in my eternal Amen. Jesus. God will do for you what no man can do for you. Amen. The blessing of God that make it read that added no sorrow will rest upon you in my eternal Amen. Jesus. As you sow into this ministry. God will bless you, Lord, and increase you in Jesus' precious name. We have prayed. Amen. Amen. Until we meet again, God bless you. And always remember that Jesus is your life. Lord. Word of Truth Life is brought to you by Living God Covenant Church Abuja, Nigeria and Maxell Express or Car Ministries.